In this video, I'm going to be talking about establishing paternity in Indiana. A lot of people don't know that establishing paternity is the process you go through to set up custody and parenting time for the first time. In this video, I'm going to talk about the process of establishing paternity, walk you through some example documents about what establishing paternity looks like in the court, as well as go through the court process and some things you should be thinking about along the way if you're going through this process. So about me, my name's Nathan Vining. I'm a family law attorney in Indiana, and I represent people in family law cases throughout the state of Indiana. By the end of this video, you should know more about paternity in Indiana. So the first thing to go over with regards to paternity is who needs to establish a paternity. And if individuals are married at the time a child is born, the husband by law is presumed to be the father. But if the child's born to people out of wedlock, then there may be a need to establish paternity. Second, you can establish a formal custody agreement you can then start to receive court-ordered parenting time and then you have, can have a parenting plan in place that is enforceable and establishes when you would get parenting time and it's important to have because otherwise you may miss your child's birthdays, Christmas, or other important events if you're unable to get the other parent to cooperate in establishing parenting time. It can also reduce conflict through having a written plan in place so it's predictable and each party knows who should have the child for what days and what holidays. So how is paternity established? First, it can be established by a paternity affidavit, which is signed at the hospital within 72 hours of the child's birth. If you sign the paternity affidavit, though, you still may need to go to court and establish paternity to get a court order. The second way to establish paternity is by filing a paternity action under Indiana Code 31.14.2. Then you can prove paternity by having both parties agree that this one person is the father, or by a DNA test, which either party can request in the paternity action. But it is important to know that the paternity test can be waived and either party can agree to establish a paternity by a formal agreement. So if you've decided that you need to establish paternity, there is a certain court process you go through to establish paternity in Indiana. It varies slightly county to county, but what I outlined here is a broad overview about what you should expect in any county. So it really starts with filing the petition to establish paternity. From there, the courts typically set a preliminary hearing. And the purpose of the preliminary hearing is to see if the parties agree to paternity or if DNA testing is needed. If DNA testing is needed, the parties will both be ordered to go to a specific lab and submit to DNA testing. From there, the court may hold another preliminary hearing to review the results. A lot of times at a preliminary hearing, the court will hear some initial testimony to get started and set a temporary order for parenting time, custody, and child support, as well as other matters that may need addressed at that time. From there, a lot of courts will require the parties to attend mediation to discuss a potential settlement and see if the parties can come to the terms that they both would agree to that could settle the case. Mediation is a process where the parties would go to a third party who would meet with them and go between both parties to see if they can work out an agreement as to what should happen for the contested issues of custody, parenting time, child support. It's a really good opportunity and way to settle a contested family law case. If you go to mediation and it's not successful, you can still settle the case through an agreement, and sometimes that happens after mediation. The parties continue talking and work out an agreement on their own. You can also agree before going to mediation at any time in the paternity case. Or if you guys can agree, you can go and resolve the case through a contested final hearing. And that's a hearing where the court will hear evidence from both parties about what should happen with custody, parenting time, child support, and make a decision as to what a final order would be. So in a paternity case, there's several documents that you're going to see. There's the initial petition to establish paternity. There are also other documents like an emergency request for a hearing. Sometimes there are different emergencies present that would require that you go to court sooner to get a court order to protect the child or stop some certain act from happening. Also, there's child support that would need to be calculated. So we're also going to talk about how to create a parenting time journal and work out different custody and parenting time schedules. And then there's formal discovery and it's how you get information about the other party's income or other things about the child and we're going to talk about discovery. So that's a broad overview of what the different documents you see in paternity case are. We're going to walk through what these documents are and what they look like so you know what to expect in your case. So starting with the paternity petition, Indiana Code 31-14-5 has several statutes that talk about what's needed in the paternity petition. And here's just a broad overview of what's included in that chapter. And at first it must be verified and it must be encaptioned in the matter of the paternity of the child's name. And it also needs to include the child's name, the child's mother's name, as well as the name of every person that's alleged to be the father. And then there's an important time factor with the paternity petition. It needs to be filed within two years after the date the child was born. And there's some exceptions to that. Um, one of them is that if the parties were living together and the person was supporting the child, that would toll that statute of limitations. 
and both parties can agree to waive that time limit as well to establish paternity after two years. So I'm gonna walk you through what a paternity petition looks like. And you can see one here. Here's just a sample case that involves parties John Doe and Jane Doe. And you can go through here and see, this is the caption of the case. And this is the portion of the document that states who the parties are, who the child is, as well as the county the case is filed in. So here I just did Marion County, the Marion Superior Court. And you go down, and this is the title, Verified Petition to Establish Paternity. And it's gonna go through those different requirements of the statute. Here it lists the, the father's name, the mother's name. It's gonna list the child's name and their date of birth. They're gonna give information about the father and where they reside, information about the mother, where she resides. It's also gonna give information about where the child resides. Here, the child's residing in Marion County, Indiana. It's important to list where the child resides because that's what gives this court in Marion County jurisdiction. Jurisdiction in a case like this follows the child. So you would file the case in the place where the child resides. You're also gonna include what you're requesting from the court. And here it's requesting an order establishing paternity, custody, and child support. And then there's the formal request at the bottom, which here is formally requesting the court establish that the petitioner is the father of the child, that it's indicating that this petitioner wants joint legal custody, he wants a parent, he wants a physical custody and parenting time order, he wants a preliminary hearing, and then just all other all other relief that the court believes is appropriate, and that's just standard in most requests. So the next consideration in a paternity case is how does the court determine custody? What they do is look at Indiana Code 31-17-2-8. And what this statute does is it lists out several factors that the court will consider when it makes its determination as to what's in the best interest of the child. The custody is determined in accordance with the best interest of the child. And these factors that are set out here are what the court thinks about when it's considering the best interest. So to start, there's the age and sex of the child, the wishes of the parents. If the child is old enough, the court may consider the child's wishes. The court will also look to the relationship with the child and the people around it. They'll look at the children and its relationship to the community and the schools. They're gonna look at the health of all the different individuals involved, look to see if there's domestic violence. So that's kind of a general overview of what those factors are and what the court looks to when considering the best interest. I have another video that talks about how you can prepare a case around the best interest of the child and what you should be thinking about with regards to each of those different factors. And the kinds of proof needed in a contested custody case to show with these factors how the best interest could be served with you. So that's something to check out if you wanna know more about how custody is determined and how to prove the best interest of a child in a custody case. So when it comes to developing your case, if you don't have an agreement as to custody and parenting time, you may need to do discovery, which is the formal process to get information from the other party. Here, you may need to get information from schools, doctors, different financial information from the other party. You also, I always recommend in a paternity case to establish a parenting time calendar or journal so you start keeping a record as to what's happened in your case. A journal or calendar can be important evidence because you can go and show the court when certain things happened and refresh your memory as to what's occurred in your case. So rather than saying, you know, they always deny my parenting time, you could point to specific dates about when parenting time was denied. And that parenting calendar or journal can be used to tell the court a story about what's happened with parenting time as well as communications in your case. With regards to discovery, as I said, there's different information that can be needed. Income information, financial information, custody information, school records, doctor records. A custody case can involve a lot of different information and discovery can be an important component that you and your attorney may need to go through if you're establishing paternity and custody and parenting time are contested. So what I'm gonna talk about next is the Indiana Parenting Time Guidelines. That's something I refer people to whenever they come into my office for the first time in a custody or parenting time meeting. Parenting time guidelines are guidelines established in Indiana that set rules for communication and parenting time. And it's really the baseline for parenting time in Indiana. It talks about for children at different ages what the baseline of parenting time should be, as well as how holiday parenting time and school breaks should be split. And then also it covers communication and what should happen with different communication issues in a co-parenting relationship. And it gives best practices for how to handle different things such as when one parent can't care for the child, what do you need to do? Do you need to offer that time to the other parent? Or can another household member watch the child? The Indiana Parenting Time Guidelines go through and set out different rules for how all those dynamic family situations can work. And it's something to go to if you're having problems in the course of your co-parenting relationship. So to give you an overview, this is the website where you can see the Parenting Time Guidelines. Let me adjust the size here. So. Here's an overview. 
some of the important sections are changes in scheduled parenting time, the guidelines will talk about what to do if changes need to occur, how do you reschedule parenting time. An important one is the opportunity for additional parenting time. So it really says that if it's reasonable and you can't care for the child, say if you're going away for a weekend for an evening, you would need to offer the other parent that ability to care for the child during that time. The other parent provides transportation. It sets out all these different rules and guidelines for what to do in a different parenting time situations. And in a lot of times, a parenting time or custody order will designate that the parties are to follow the Indiana parenting time guidelines. And what that means is, is that they would need to go through and become familiar with these rules and use these rules to determine what needs to happen if there's conflicts or things you can't agree on in your situation. These rules would then govern and tell you how to handle that conflict or issue that arose. So going down further, it goes into specific parenting time provisions. And a lot of times a parent may be given what's referred to as guideline parenting time. So if it says that you're to exercise parenting time, pursuant to the Indiana Parenting Time Guidelines, this is what it means. And it goes through for different age groups, it sets out what parenting time could look like. And if you're ordered guideline parenting time, this is what the parenting time would be. So it has different provisions for birth age through four months, later infancy 10 to 12 months. It, it goes through and sets out different schedules depending on how old the child is, all the way up to when the children are older, to every other weekend and night midweek. And it even talks about extended parenting time over summers. And then another important provision in the guidelines is this holiday parenting time schedule where it sets out how Mother's Day works, Father's Day works, the child's birthday. It's very inclusive and goes over all the different ways that holidays can be split. Every family is different though, so this general schedule may not fit for your family. So a lot of times people can agree to different things on their own that fit their family. You can even write it in a court order if you have specific wishes, but they do oftentimes default to this holiday parenting time schedule in the Indiana Parenting Time Guidelines. It's a good baseline on how you can split up holidays, but you are free to try and agree to do things differently. So that's the Indiana Parenting Time Guidelines. Another important thing, if you've never been in a custody case, you may not be familiar with all the different ways that you can split parenting time. There's sample 50-50 schedules, 70-30 schedules, 80-20 schedules. It's, it gives you different ideas on how you, can, how you can split up that time between each parent because every family is different and your parenting time situation may demand a specific schedule that fits your family. So I'd encourage you to get familiar with the different types of custody schedules and think about what would work in your situation. So that was a brief overview of what you can see in a paternity case. It's by no means exhaustive and the process can be very complicated. There can be emergency issues that you really need the help of an attorney to tackle. There can be relocation issues, issues with domestic violence and the need for protective orders to protect you and the children. There can be issues with the party not complying with the orders and the need to file contempt to enforce court orders. And there can be all sorts of different things that can complicate a case and really necessitate the need for an attorney to guide you through the process and make sure that you're well protected through the process and you know the right information, the right motions are being filed, and that you're getting the correct advice along the way. So the process can be more complicated. It's important to cover that in this video so that you understand that there are things that you should think about that you really need to get legal help and advice on as you go through the process. So again, my name is Nathan Vine. If you have questions about paternity, custody, or parenting time in Indiana, you should give me a call or text me at the number that follows. I'd be happy to review your case, talk about what's going on in your situation, and give you advice as to what could be done in different circumstances. You can also learn more about paternity, custody, and parenting time in Indiana through my YouTube channel or my website, which goes in depth through a lot of these other topics and things that you could need to consider through different videos, articles, and advice on what should be done in your case.